Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Game Wisdom Examines. One second, let me just move get that back up there. All right, tonight I am playing one of my favorite games, and that is Hinterland. This was a game developed by Tilted Mill way back in 2008. And it's a game that I love to play because it's a great example of a positive feedback loop and multiple areas or systems of design. Something that we see in games like XCOM, Darkest Dungeon, and other fair of mine, Star Control 2. Hinterland is, like I said, one of my favorite games. It's definitely in like the top five alongside games like Star Control 2 and, surprisingly, Sid Meier's Sim Golf, which is my favorite game from the company, but we'll save that discussion for another time. Now, even though Hinterland is one of my favorite games, it's not without its problems, which we'll definitely be talking about, and you'll see probably within the next 10 or 20 minutes. As I said, Hinterland was released in 2008, and this was right around that bubble where indie development started to balloon, and the indie scene really started to take off, and both developers and consumers expected more out of their indie titles. But we'll show you... We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, let's get started. The idea of the game is that you have to basically found and essentially support a new settlement in a dangerous medieval world. Well, there's monsters and ogres and all that other stuff. So, to start, you create a character. And you have different classes up here. And normally, I like to play as, where is it? Knight, Assassin, Journeyman. They added in a bunch of characters with a p expansion just before the game essentially fell out. Let's see, is this a... No, that's a Undead. Yeah, I remember there was a point where you could just put someone with like no starting skills. Or maybe something else. Maybe it was the Outlaw. Yeah, I like to start as him just because there's just to make it interesting on myself. So we're going to play on difficult. We'll do a medium game. That should be enough to show everything in this video. And you can turn off different abilities here that affects your score. And part of the game is getting a high score at the end of it. Let's see. So this should do for right now. So the game itself is one part ARPG and one part city builder. And the two basically support each other, which you'll see in a second. So I think this should work for right now. Let's see. These are different quests, so let's get going. It's been a few years since I last played this game, so I'm probably going to be a little bit rusty. So as I, while this is loading up, so I'll probably take a minute or two. The game, as I said, was developed by Tilted Mill and lead designer Chris Beatrice, who worked on the Impression City Builder series before founding Tilted Mill and working on some other great classics such as, excuse me, Children of the Nile, SimCity Societies, and others. I may do an episode on Children of the Nile at some point because it is a very different take on city building. Okay, sounds like we are about ready. Come on, game. Oh, there's the crow. There you go. Alright, so I set the stats for the world generation, so you're not going to find every resource. That's going to make things a little bit harder for us. So, let's see. Nothing too hard here. So at every, every level you can improve a stat. So I'm going to choose, well, I'll choose attack for right now. And a trait. So let's see, earn gold from city, collect more gold from loot. I'm going to do earn gold from city. I'm going to pause for a second. So here we have the main screen. Over here you can advertise to basically get more people to show up that you may want to recruit for your town. We got the gold that we start with, food. Basically everyone in your city needs one point of food to each day to eat. If you run out of food, people get unhappy and you can lose. 
number of people in the town. This is your reputation. Because I start off as an outlaw, that means that everyone doesn't like me. So I gotta move quickly to improve that. Town quality. Then over here is my character himself. Current attack power, defense, and these will go up and down based on what items I equip. And I think that's it for right now. So let's start things out here. There's my little hero. So we have two people ready to join. We have a necromancer and an undertaker. Either character really doesn't have much. I actually can't use either of them because I they require these different abilities. So he needs more fame, which I don't have. And I need to have souls in order for the necromancer. So I'm gonna get rid of him. I'm gonna get rid of him and let some more people hopefully come to my little village. So they're going to go and in a few minutes some more people are going to appear. Now here's our map and the world is basically ge randomly generated whenever you start a new game. So this is a medium sized world so you can see it just goes up to here. Large would take us all the way out to there and small is like maybe about here. My goal is to basically claim every territory point on the map and to claim it I basically need to kill all the enemies there. So let's go out while we're waiting for some more heroes. So there I go. And here's our first point. Okay, oh we got some gold. It sounds like oh, we have a skeleton. And the design is sell that the farther you get away from your starting city the more dangerous things are going to become. Okay, so we got gold, and there's little points that sort of tell you how dangerous the section is. Okay, so we need to find, there should be some more enemies here. There they are. You can see I'm taking some damage in the right. As I kill more enemies, I'll raise my stats up. Oh, almost dead, better kill this guy quick, there we go. Gold, gold. Okay, I'm going to advertise and maybe get some more followers. There we go. So who do we have here? We have a high priestess and a guard. They're good, but I really need a farmer in order to get some more people. Okay, there we go, farmer. Farmers are like your low level. I just need a little bit more fame to get them and they'll produce food. Okay, and we have a, I think that's a healer, herbalist. Okay, so what I need to do now is get some, I need to find some resources. I need to claim some territory in order to basically get some more fame. So where are these skeletons? Hello, where are you guys? There's usually like a main marker for each area that sort of tells me where most of the enemies are. We got some more areas popping up. There they are. There's the rest of the skeletons. Ooh. Ooh. Well, that was to be expected. Okay. Ooh. Maybe we'll restart just to get a better shot at the beginning. As I said, it's been a while since I played this. And part of the challenge of the game was the fact that I set with randomized resources. Now I could also set the lead level to hardcore, which means that if I die, it's game over. I don't respawn. How do I... There we go, create a new character. Like I said, this is 2008 interface, so it's a little tricky to get through everything. Let's see. We'll set it to hardcore, and we'll make it long. That way we can probably take it all the way up to an hour of play. Okay. Let's try this. So we'll get a new world, new randomly generated resources and situations. And hopefully I'll get some good starting heroes. Okay, so once again, just gotta wait for the game to finish loading. 
Now, as you can tell, the graphics aren't exactly that amazing. And part of it was because of the design decisions for Hinterland. When the game was released in 2008, it was billed pretty much as a budget game, which at the time was $20. And if you hear that as a gamer today, it sounds kind of weird. Because back, because today twenty dollars seems like a premium price. But back in two thousand eight, pretty much before two thousand nine, games were of their games were priced higher, and it meant that it costs a lot more to play these games. So like a typical game would be like a forty fifty dollar, and twenty was your bottom of the bucket type deal. And Hinterland was a more as like a quick game to be developed, so it didn't get as much time on it as a full release game. Now, unfortunately, it does suffer because while this is a great idea, the game is somewhat limited, which you'll probably see as we keep playing. So this time, I'm going to improve my defense. Let's see, agile, dangerous. We'll go for dangerous. Okay, so two new heroes, merchant, and undertaker. Again, I can't use them. I need more fame. So basically, I'm starting off with almost nothing. So we, if you look at the map right here, this is a one dot, which means it's just this should be fairly easy. Okay, so gotta get them at least one at a time. Where are you guys? There's two. Okay. I can survive long enough to get some better weapons. That will make things a lot easier. Or until I can clear, get my fame up a little bit more. Okay, there's another one. Now another bit of the design is, as you can see in the upper right, my attack and defense are going to become modified based on how many enemies I'm fighting and my health and all that, the more damage I'm taking. This is another bit of a design problem because it means that the characters that stay around longest are going to just kick so much ass that essentially if they die, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage. And as long as you keep them alive, you'll just be able to steamroll over everything. Okay. So we have some equipment. If you look at the Rusty Axe, you can actually equip weapons and gear to different townsfolk, and that enhances their capabilities doing their normal job. And that's sort of where the play between the two systems come in, as you're going to go out, get better gear to make your guys better, so that they can do their job better to make coming out easier. Alright, so we completed the first area. We got a lot more fame. We need four, it looks like, as the base. Let's see. Okay, let's get rid of them, because we got a lot of food. Innkeeper. Okay. Now, also, because my fame is enhanced, I, I don't have to worry about the king throwing me out. Now, if I remember right, I think I heal by going back to town. Let's see. Let's get back over here. There we go. So my health's going to recover a little bit. I still really need a farmer. So we'll advertise again. There we go. The farmer is your basic grunt. And let's see, we have a herder. Alright, so you're going to what you do is you build, and you can place their town, they're basically they're building anywhere in these nodes. So I'm just going to place it right here. Oh, we got some raiders coming. So now what I can do, once we have any people in the town, I can go to their town, their, their little building here, and I can tell them to come out and help me fight. So we have two food being produced, so that's good. Oh. Looks like we got company. Raiders will show up every so often, and you have to deal with them, or they will break your town and kill your people. Now this is just a level 1 fight, so I don't need to worry too much about it. And I get some good stuff in the process. I think it may raise my fame up, so let's kill them. I leveled up my attack. Okay. 
So you can see my equipment is going up. I can move items to the town over here so that I can easily move, basically let them automatically pick up items that are that will disappear over time. Okay, so we're running out of food, but the farmer, what I need now is the herder. That will produce two food, so we'll get him. And the meat improves the town quality, which means it'll be easier to attract people. Okay. So now we have four food being produced, three. So I need one more person, one more farmer to basically offset. Now I can also, let's go to the followers here. I can upgrade the farm for gold and let it produce more food. But to do that I need a manor. So to do that I have to go back up here. And in order to upgrade, let's see. I need 20 gold. Okay, so since my character is getting a little bit beefy, I'm going to go out into this other one dot up there and see we can get a lot more fame and hopefully a lot more gold. Okay. Oh, this guys are hitting hard. And you can also do the classic ARPG strategy of Oh, he's level 2, that's why. Well, finding the level 2 is also going to raise my stats up a little bit quicker. Just got to be a little bit careful. Alright, I leveled up. And we got some fame and gold. Okay. So I'm going to improve my health. And I'm going to get thrifty again so I get some free gold coming in. Food we are doing good on because I have the two people. So what I want to do, I really need to recruit someone to come out and fight with me. Okay, who do we have now? No, can't do anything there. And people will show up on their own as long as there's a spot that they can occupy. So we'll send her out. This is bugging for some reason. I don't know what happened. Okay, there we go. Okay. Requires more fame because I already have a farmer. I'll get rid of the necromancer. Now that I killed that level 2, it should be a lot easier to clear this point up here. Okay, let's see. Got some more defense, good. There's another level 2. Gotta be a little bit careful there. Again, you want to try to get one at a time, especially when you're the outlaw. And you start with pretty, with almost nothing. Okay. At this point, I'm pretty much self-sustaining. I got food coming in. The town's going to be giving me gold. Slowly but surely. So what I want to do now is probably upgrade the manor so that I can upgrade the farm and get a lot more food. Okay, let's try to get him. Oop, this may be a bit too much for my level 2 guy. Yeah. And then I went to the level 3 area instead of the level 1. Okay, he's going to keep following me, but he'll stop. Again, I don't need a necromancer. I can't really do anything with one. Okay. Yep, you're in. Another farmer. There we go. So now we have more than... 
Oop, the king sent me a request. He wants 10 food, and I have five days to do it. I should be able to afford that, and with all the extra, with the two farmers, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So let's see. Everyone needs food. I'm making four a day. Oh, I'm making six. Okay. All right. So I should be able to get that pretty quickly. Again, this early part is a little tricky because I need to get up to that level to just get one good weapon. That's really what I need in order to start turning the tide. Okay, bandit level one shouldn't be too big of a deal. One gold. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Look at that detail fighting, folks. <laughs> okay. Ah, so here's an item. I can give this to a herder, and this will increase the amount of food that they'll produce. Okay. I might be a little bit careful. I can handle these guys one on one pretty easy. I'll go back to town to recover because we are playing in hardcore mode. Some more people, that's good. And a potion, great. I'll complete the quest soon. Just, uh oh. Don't want to fight those level 3 guys. Okay, we have a. No, we only need a, we can't afford a priest. There's a town guard. Okay, yeah, I'm running low on food. That shouldn't matter. Producing one a day. And while we're waiting for my health to recover, as I said, what I like about this game is that it's a good example of that positive feedback loop of play. The more I go out and improve my town, it makes it easier to go out and fight the enemies, bring those resources back to improve the town, and so on and so forth. And very few games can go with these types of multiple systems of play. And it's why I enjoy Hinterland. It's a game idea that I would love to be able to basically make like a full-blown version of this game. It's just how much I love this idea of basically having a randomly generated village that you go out and you improve it and then you can use that to go and explore more. Sort of similar to like the Dark Cloud series with how they did that. Okay, I leveled up again. Oop, gotta get away from them. I should be getting some more visitors soon. Once I get up to, I think, 12 food, I'll use the town requests or the king requests just to get my fame even higher. I could use these potions, but until I get a alchemist, I believe, or an herbalist, I won't be able to produce some on my own. Okay, we got a visitor, the goodman, that'll produce more gold. What I really want is a herder for the livestock, because I can enhance that. So, no, no. I can spend the gold to speed it up, but it doesn't make sense to do that right now. Okay, that's enough waiting. Oh, time out. We got some raiders coming. So we'll just wait right here for them. Okay, come on, where are they? You can zoom out here, this will make it a little easier to see where they are. Oh wait, I do have a herder. One second. Let me deal with these guys first. And you can see it's raising my attack up pretty nicely, so it's going to make it a lot easier for me to kill these guys. Okay. Another weapon. 
And who else is there? They're no match for me. There we go. There we go. The oath. So what I want to do is I can move this into my town. Go up to him. Ah, so that's what happened. He already took the oats, so instead of producing two food a day, he's producing three and a half. And if I upgrade this more, it can produce more food. So if we're done talking to him. They have their farmers. Okay, so I'm going to fulfill the quest. Get a lot more fame. Now I want to start thinking about... One second. So we have 7.5. Okay, I want to start thinking about building up some more people to come with me. So it will improve the fence. Greatly improves or extra food. Then we'll do greatly improves. Okay, who's here now? Someone show up? Oh well. We'll head back up here. I should have more than enough strength to take out this level 1 node. To avoid them. Oh, good, she's all alone. So I can finish this band off quickly. New day. Yeah, I'm running low on food, but I don't need to worry. I have enough food producers. I may upgrade the manor and then upgrade the farms next. Okay, who's left? Gotta be a little bit careful not to trigger a high level up guy here. Is this the last level one? Yeah. We'll take him out and this will secure this area. Once I find resource nodes, securing the area will also let me get those resources. So we got a new weapon, rusty spear, and uh can't do anything with the weapons yet. Okay. There's some more level 2 gnolls. I should be able to kill them. Oh, getting a little low. I'll head back to town and I'll start upgrading the manor. Okay. There's another herbalist. Can't do anything there. Oh, another herder. Perfect. Get some more food. Okay. Now, how are we doing with food now? Ten. So, producing eleven. Five. So, that's enough. So, I'm going to upgrade the outpost to a manor. Now, I can start upgrading. Is that a black craftswoman? Okay. She can produce armor, but she needs a lot more gold than what I have. I won't get the goodsman so he can start giving me more gold per day. Now that the town has been to take someone out. Okay. You're with me now, Theta. So now that she is not farming, it means I'm producing less food. But I have more than enough being produced to cover. I want to have someone with me to basically help even the odds. So we'll give her. There we go. So now that we have two people, I have to be a little bit careful. If they die, they're dead for good. And that'll also give me an excuse to build the graveyard for the Undertaker. So now we have two people. And they level up the same way as I do. The more damage they give and receive, the more their stats improve. The only uh, limitation of the system, I'm going to pause for one second here, is that you can't, your people who go out, you can't really uh, let them improve how they go back to the village based on how they level up. Meaning that a level 5 farmer isn't going to do a better job than a level 2 farmer or a level 1. 
And I think that was sort of missing missed opportunity and probably something that would be in a full-blown expansion or full-blown sequel, really, to be able to have a greater interaction between these systems of city building and ARPG design. And that's why I would really love that's why I would really love to make a game like this with a lot more complexity and a lot more depth to it. Okay, we got some armor at long last, so I can give that to him. So now things are starting to look better. Okay. I got a small posse, and I have I think up to four people in my party. So now we can just really kick a lot of ass. Okay. She just leveled up. And you can improve their stats again, which I think is a missed opportunity. Okay, and this area is now clear. And we have stone, which means anyone who requires stone, I can basically take that and they'll be able to use it. Okay, basic tools, good. Alright, so what I want to do now is... I want to get the... Let me see, what is he, the inn, the goodsman up, so that way I can have more visitors come, and I'll get gold per day. So, how are we doing? Nine being produced, four being consumed. So, yep, you're fine, we'll build you a little spot here. And now I'm producing six gold per day, and I can also upgrade the town to get more resources. Okay. So 10, 9 being produced, 5 being consumed. Can I upgrade a farm? Let's see. No, can't do a dragon just yet. Cattle... I can just do this. Very. Okay, we'll upgrade the farm. So now it's a large farm, so it's producing 1.5 times more food. And I can upgrade it even more, but I need access to water. So now, that should give me enough food to be pretty comfortable, and I can hire more people. Okay, so go back up here. Yeah, so producing 10. All right, so I'm getting double the food. That's good. And my far farmer, Theta. Well, that was tough to say. Oh, she got ran out of health. Who is hitting me? Oh, it must be the spellcasters. The spellcaster was hurting missile weapons, alright. And when someone's health gets too low, they'll retreat back to town, which I can then go back and recruit them. Okay. Let's see, can I just move this over? There we go. Move all those items back into town so people can use them. Now, how is Thea doing? As you can see, she's healing pretty nicely. I'll wait till her health gets a little bit higher, and then we'll take her back out. Okay, more people. Again, I don't need a necromancer, so goodbye. Mm, not yet. The quality of the town is improving, which means it'll be easier to attract people. Uh, I really want another farmer that I can upgrade to a large. Yeah, you're coming out with me again, Data. And... Welcome to our weapon. Did she drop it? Okay, there you go. You have a nice little spear now. Oh, forgot to take his items. Oh, and I'll give her armor. There we go, that should make it a little easier for her to survive. Now you can see on the map this point right here, this is an outpost. It means that the enemies are going to be of even higher level. So I don't want to do that just yet. But I should be able to clear this area pretty quickly now. Okay, It's okay for her to take damage because it's going to raise her defense. And she'll just retreat back anyway. Oh, a book. Okay, that'll let them produce f more food quicker. And maybe I'll move to the left side next. So let me get back to town. As you can see, the herbalist, the the guy, was automatically taken from my stat. So she's using it now, which is improving the amount of food. Okay. 
So once she's finished leveling up, are there more people here yet? There we go. Who do we have now? An acolyte for they can actually heal, but they need a lot of gold. And who is the? I think that's a bard. Oh, he improves the qu town's quality, which lets it attract higher level heroes. Okay. How are we doing with food? We got a lot of food. Maybe I'll build a workshop next. All right. Where are we here? Basic clothing. <laughs> Cassandra keeps taking all my stuff. There we go. That's better. This is for you. And you're going to come out with me again. Okay. I'm going to build the craftsman. There you go. So the workshop, he'll produce weapons and items, basically over time, the longer I leave them alone. I can also upgrade them to either a Fletcher, Fletchery, or a Smithy, and that will change what they can produce. So we're good there. So you're going to come out. Get rid of that. I do want to get this Acolyte, but I'm going to need 36 more gold, because she'll be able to heal, and that will keep us alive a lot longer. It means we don't have as much downtime. Okay, so back up here, we can finish this patrol area, hopefully. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, I forgot to de-equip her... Uh, the hoe. Is that a hoe? No, pitchfork. Sorry. But she can still fight with that, and still giving her uh, bonuses and experience. Alright, two more air enemies. Oh, hold on. I really won't go back to town and see who we just got. Maybe I can afford that acolyte. One more creature here. Where are you? There you are. As you can see, playing as the aloe, you start off pretty much at a deficit, but you can get past it, and then it's pretty hard to get back down. Ooh, new weapon for me. Okay, so now I want to go back to town and see who are these people. Actually, let me give her the sword. There we go. Okay. So the trapper contributes food and can improve their quality. I can also take them out with the bow and basically let them get even more stuff. So. We're going to build her home. I still need 56. Now, who are you? Who's this guy right here? Fortune teller gives food, I mean, gives gold, but I need a crystal ball item. Okay, so now that we have our hunter, he's got a dagger. I can actually equip him. Well, actually, he's got all the equipment already. So if I click on her, you can see she has double the food coming in now. Okay. So we are looking pretty well in terms of resources. Once I get that 56, let's see, how are we doing? Yeah, so we're basically producing double the food what we need. We got gold coming in. So very shortly, I'll be able to upgrade, get that acolyte for healing. Now you'll see part of the problem as you can with the design is that again with these two heroes basically going out and getting stats going me it'll make it harder for new people later on to get boosted and there's a limited number of enemies on the map outside of these random raids. Okay, so run back to town and there's also like little portals that you can find that will give you a shortcut. So here they come again. But I'm not too worried. Alright, I'm now recognized. The king sent me a request. New weapon. Pause. Give that to her. So this farmer is basically going to become my badass warrior. 
You can see she's now kicking a lot of ass. Okay, they're dead. Got another trap. And some potions, good. We'll move this stuff back to the town so people can use that. I want 25 food. We'll do that in a little bit. Okay, can I afford her just yet? And I also want to see about improving the inn or the goodman. Can I do it? Yeah. This will increase the amount that he brings in. But I think I'm going to get the acolyte first because that way I can get a healer. And the healers basically get experience just by either doing spell damage or by providing health to the other party members. I only have fortune teller. Don't need a craftswoman. I already have one. So we can go out, and this little area on the left is going to be pretty easy. Now that will give me enough resources to get this acolyte. Okay, so here we go again. You can see she's getting pretty badass. Got a lot of food, too. I mean, look at the difference now in terms of how much we are clearing out these low areas. Okay. You're basically selling the patches of fur automatically. Okay. Enemy site's been cleared. Another one down. Five down. 50 to 45 to go. But it's going to go very quickly once we start upgrading everybody. Okay. We got another trapper at level three. All right. So first... She will be there. So if I build multiple shrines, they can basically pray and get increases like this. Or I take them out, and she'll be able to provide healing. So you're going to come with me. She already has a one. Put that back in town. Now how are we doing in terms of resources? He's still producing the wood shield. Or she is. How are we doing? So, producing 14 food still. Good. Okay. Now, where is my hunter here? Can I improve her? Upgrade camp to hunting lodge by need wild game and a flexury. So that could be another upgrade to pursue. Okay. I should probably get another farm and upgrade that. Okay, so you get out, you get out. We really don't need guards, which is another bit of a problem. So your defenses are so limited that you don't really... There's not enough, I think, content to really justify spending a lot on defenses. So we're going to go up. Now, I got up here with Latia because she's only level 1, but she should improve pretty quickly. Oop. Got to deal with the guy who's attacking her. As you can see, she is healing everyone, and it's slowly raising her stat, her magic set. So as it gets higher up, she'll be able to heal quicker. Okay. So because attack basically affects healing, I need to give her a high attack in order to do more healing. And again, once you get characters high enough in level, you only really need a full party, which again is somewhat limited in, which is limits the design and the replay value of the game. So now we have herbs, which means that it improves the town quality, and I can get more, essentially, the herbalists and those people to join. So let's finish these guys up. So with this healer now, it's going to lower our downtime dramatically. Okay, more people. There we go. Just in time, the herbalists. I still need a lot more fame, but we're almost there. So she can produce potions so I can take them out. Let's see. The bard gives me gold. No, it gives me town quality. So I want to probably fulfill that quest and then probably get the herbalist. 
or actually I want to improve the hovel or the goodsman and get more coal there we go thank you and I mean you can see now just how much of a difference things are going with that healer so finish him off Another day has gone by, and this will be the last one for the ruins, and dead. Oh, so we have a new staff. I can give that to her to make her heal even better. Okay, I really want to take out this four on the far right side, because that's where they're raiding from. But this is a portal, so let's try to clear this one out. Alright, Tessa finally creates something at the blacksmith. Yeah, so I think I'm going to improve the hovel next. <laughs> Let me go just chopping them all up. A few more good... And now that you are kind of... Oh, almost... Let's get a heal going. There you go. And you're almost limited, but also by who you can take based on how much equipment you find. Because there's only so many weapons. Okay. One more enemy at the portal, and then it's ours. Alright. So now we got the portal. I can use this to immediately warp back to town. There we go. And the portals basically spawn at the outskirts of your town. We'll move this equipment over there. We have 102 gold. So first, I'm going to improve our goodman and make that an inn. So it goes from 5 gold. Oh, it gives us more. I can improve it to a tavern, but I need fresh water. Okay. There we go. So we have another visitor in town a trapper. Again, I really want more farmers since I can basically get a flat improvement. We already have a trapper, so goodbye. 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 Still really want her. Okay, do I have enough food? Oh yeah, I have more than enough food. Let's fulfill that. Gives us a lot more fame. Now I'm going to move over to the fort. I don't know if I'll be strong enough to take it out yet, but we'll see. Okay. Maybe one-on-one -on -one I can pick them off. Let's see. He's level 6, I'm level 3. That's a little bit too dangerous, I think, especially on hardcore mode. But I can go around and clear these areas on the left. Maybe I can take out this one guy. Ooh, 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 run, 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 run. Wow, those spellcasters are really hurting. Okay, let's get back here. I can actually take my healer over to the farm and let her basically heal and get free experience. So let's go back over here. Where are you? There she is. Another wooden shield. I can actually put that on me. Oh, I have a two-hand weapon. I can give it to her. Okay, let her heal her up. Is she ready yet? Okay, more people. Oh, a merchant. Oh, so he produces a lot of gold. Yeah, so we'll get him. That will be perfect for getting a lot more gold for us. Okay, so she's back in our care. Give her the sword and the shield. There he goes. So she should be able to survive a lot better now. How are we doing in food? Still good. We're still at, operating at a plus. So I do want to get 
the potion person built and maybe another farmer okay we don't need another craftsman hold on let me just go back to town quickly and boot them out at least until I upgrade the one that I have so Theta is going to become really powerful because she's basically hanging out with me instead of farming and getting higher stats okay we'll help to the ruins Oop, we got raiders coming and you have to deal with the raiders or they will destroy your town and then of course it's a game over <laughs> Okay, so we're back in town. Now, how are we doing in terms of gold? Okay, so we're making 16 a day. That's good. I can't upgrade the manor. Oh, wait, yeah, I can. I need 100 gold for that. Okay, where are these raiders so we can get back out there? Here they come. Okay. And the enemies are also limited, as you can tell. Okay. What the hell? Oh, it was an annoying spellcaster doing a lot of damage. Okay. Fortunately, I can just keep getting healed by Latia. Oh, they stunned me. But no matter, I can take them out. There we go. Got some more good items too for my town. There we go, another farmer. Perfect. Get you over here and we'll upgrade you as well. Okay. Now, where is everybody again? Then we'll turn. There you are. Can't do anything with that staff. Or can I? Iron one, tap one. Yeah. Can't do much with that. Okay, she's done. Or she's almost done healing. Okay, get rid of you, get rid of you. Alright, yep. Now, who else has the armor? Okay. Give him, give her that. And a shield. There we go. Move my arms over. Okay, let's go back out. Once I can hit, like, level 5, I think I'll be able to take on that fort on the right-hand side. Hopefully I'll level up soon. Okay, another farmer. And who are you? High Priestess. That's the, I think, upgraded version of the Acolyte. But I need a lot more stuff in order to afford her. Okay, you can see she's continuing to level up. And I just got a level. Okay, we got another request. And the crests are another basic system. It's just giving, requiring food. Yeah, I'll be able to afford that pretty much within the time, I believe. I leveled up. I'm going to improve my defense, I think. And increase health, collect more gold. I want to get efficient, so we get more gold for the buildings. Let's finish this area up. She'll heal me first, and then she'll heal the other one. Okay. What's this? Enchanted apple. At least like a potion. Ooh. Very strong two-hand sword. That's all mine. Got some shears for herbalists. 
Oh, she just leveled up her healing, so that would mean that she'll be able to heal quicker and faster. I mean, quicker and she'll heal more per use. Perfect. Okay. We'll head up and to the right. This will be very quick. Yeah, that new sword is really helping out. I may have less defense, but I'll gain more defense for each hit that I take. What's this? Go lock charm? That's good. Uh, upgrade. There's the hoe. <laughs> uh, the pitch for this is the hoe, which is the upgraded version, I believe, which will increase food production. Okay. Another area clear. Oh, we got a rare dagger. Okay, doing really well now. I can probably get one more person on my team. I really want like a regular spellcaster. Someone who can basically shoot missile weapons. Okay, we'll move over here. And finish these guys off. Now the resources are coming pretty quickly. What's this? Low quality sword. And I can also sell stuff at that merchant. Okay. Going pretty quickly now. Got more fame. I'll get that other farmer again just to keep my food supply up because again the town the king basically only wants food and I think maybe gold. Oh, I didn't get this stuff? I thought I did. A whistle. Okay, get more food for them. Perfect. Get back to town. New shield. Okay move all that stuff over there so they'll take the items that they can use. Alright, build you a home there. And where are you? Oh, no, there you go. So now how are we doing? I can upgrade the manor. Okay, so now we're producing 22 points of food a day consuming 10, so we're really getting up there. I still can't do anything with her. Craftswoman, no. Hmm. Now, I really want a spellcaster, just someone to do some elemental damage. I don't know if there's any real difference, but it's just great in terms of spreading out the items, so I don't have everyone using weapons and whatnot. Okay. There's our herbalist, so I could recruit him. We don't need a high priestess. We can't do anything with the Undertaker just yet. Guard. Mm, we don't need. Mm, well, we have Herb, so we'll go for him next. Okay. Now that we have the Potion, or the Alchemist, in, let's go over here, click on him. He can produce items or he can sell them. He can basically make potions or sell them for additional gold. And I can upgrade him to an out to a lab or to an infirmary. I'm not sure I forget what the difference is, honestly. But they both require fresh water, which I can't do just yet. So I'm gonna let him I already have seven potions, so I'm gonna let him go to producing gold. That way I can get more upgrades. Here they come again. Eh, might as well, can I fulfill? Oh, I need two more. Alright, they'll be here shortly.
And if you look at the map, there's a lot of areas that just repeat themselves, like outposts, ruins, stuff like that. That's another limitation of the game, of the game's limited development. There could have been so much more they could have done in terms of the resources, what you can do to these towns. And again, this was basically built as a very budget Maya game at the time. And I, I would just love to be able to chance to work on like a major version of this. And it's also why whenever I see a Kickstarter for like a city builder with ARPG elements in it, I usually go for it, like I did with Stone Hearth. Okay, there's another hoe. Alright. I'll wait the full time just so that I can go long without needing another request. Now if I don't find water on the map, I can have it built for me in town by using up a lot of gold. So that's always an option, so you're never truly completely limited. Oop, who's hitting me? Okay. More body armor. Okay. Oop, more people came. Oh, we got a ring. Not bad. Give that to me. Okay. High priest still can't use. I should also build a bard at some point to raise my town quality so I can afford the higher up guys. Okay, treasure chest, a lot of gold. Gold and a potion. You can see she is healing me up again. Okay, so we'll head to the left. See, we unlock, we have more of the map revealed by exploring. Oop. Again, you want to try to take them out one at a time. Oop, big guy. And the expansion they released for also allows you to play as orcs and undead and other different variety, but didn't really unlock any big changes to the gameplay itself. Alright. Dead. Another good luck charm. She went up again in an attack level. And this will give me another quarry, but it doesn't do anything because I already have a source. There's our portal down here that I can just run over to in case there's a raid. There's another herbless level three. So more people will come to your town at a higher level as you get further in, and they cost more gold. But again, if you start out and cultivate characters from the beginning, they'll have much higher stats compared to just buying a level three or four or so on. Okay, so we have another patrol area. All right, level four. I should be able to handle them pretty easily dead. I have enough potions to hopefully mitigate any trouble. Okay, she's running back to town. Should be a little bit careful because I have two spellcasters attacking me. But I'm high enough level in terms of defense that I'm just shrugging them off. Okay, one more enemy at the cave. Oh, nice. Upgrade for the robe. Increase her attack speed, or in this case, increase her healing. Hmm. Upgrade bow and robes. Not bad. Now, that's a really good short sword. I can use that for her when I get her back from the farm. Extra food, potion, good. Alright, we're now getting really up there in terms of items and being able to afford more stuff. Perfect. So, I can now afford to do some more upgrading. 
I wish I could find a source of war because I don't really want to spend the gold for it. Okay. So let's see. How are we doing? Followers, there you are. She's still injured. She should be recovered by now. This guy keeps taking my sword. Okay. No. Uh, there she is. Give that to her. There we go. She's got the robe. Okay, so you're wrong. Oh, she auto equipped everything again. There we go. And take the shield. Good. There we go. Everyone is back to where they should be. I still need water, though. Just for the hell of it, we'll get another farmer. Upgrade that. Get some more food. So we're now really good with food, really good with gold. I could upgrade the well. Okay, we only need a trapper. Okay, where's our... There's a craftswoman, farmer, shrine... I knew I had someone... There we go, the merchant. I could take him out, too. Okay, where's our trapper? Well, you know, at this point, I think I'm just going to take... Well, she's taking four food. Maybe I'll take a trapper and have them just be like a archer at this point, because I'm not getting any good spellcasters. Wait, what the hell? That's weird. Did someone take my sword? Two... One... That's weird. What happened to my sword? I had a two-handed sword on me. It disappeared. Well, that sucks. Okay. She'll come out with us. There's that. Hell is being very greedy people. Okay, attack two, attack two. Let me see, let me pause for a second here. Okay, give that to her. Now because she's attacking a higher up enemy, she'll improve her stats a lot quicker. What the hell happened to my sword? Dagger 2, 1. Oh, I guess I'll keep the axe. She's got that weapon. Did they sell the, the item? Hmm. Very odd. Okay. Don't need another herder. Can't do any necromancer. Got enough food for right now. Let's see. Got a full party as well. Yeah, we got more than enough food, more than enough gold. 
Now the raiders are here. Maybe I'll upgrade the smithy next. Even with the lower weapon, because my attack stats are so high, I'm still doing a lot of damage. There we go. That was quick and easy. She'll just keep up leveling them up or raising their health up. And I want to see about my blacksmith. I'm going to turn him into... Can I do a smithy? I need iron. Okay, is there any iron nearby? Can't tell. And I also have a full part now, so maybe I'll try the outpost on the right hand side. If I can kill that, it will give me a lot of experience and fame. If I can take them again one at a time, it will make things a lot easier. There we go, that's one down. Oh boy, big guy charging. Uh -oh. oh no, he killed one of my guys. Who did he kill? Oh, the hunter. Oh well. Oh, some more armor. We'll take that. I guess we will hire her. She'll be the new trapper. I leveled up, will improve defense again, collect more gold from loot, increase health, okay. Now we have remains, I can actually get the gravekeeper now, or the mortician, okay. She is leveling up over there. That's weird. I think this game is still a little buggy because that two-hand sword is back in my inventory. Or what? Yeah, there it is, right there. I wonder if it's not showing all the loot. Could that be it? Okay, she should be done healing almost. Okay. Alright, so we need a new trapper. Here. Okay. Yeah, demolish that. Okay, now I can take her back out. Give her the ring. Oh, there's the necromancer. Can't do anything with him. Or her. Or him. There's the sword. I give that to her. What the? Why are people taking my weapon out of my thing there? Stop doing that. That is very odd. I keep taking all my stuff. put anything else on? No, I don't think so. There we go, I can sell all this. Get some decent loot. I mean I can afford to do some upgrades. She's producing. 
Oh, there's the mortician. There's the... No. 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 Alright, this should do. Actually, I do want to get that... This is another bit of the problem. I'm trying to get another trapper and they're just not showing up. There's a guard. Craftswoman. I'll roll one more time. There we go. Alright. Barf Bartholomew. That, I can't pronounce that right now. <laughs> you are with me. Oh, he already has one. Does he? Yeah. Okay. What the? Again, they took my stuff? Come on, guys. Okay, something is very wrong here. They keep taking all my gear off of me. That is very odd. Okay, I turned off auto equip. Maybe that will help. Okay, what is happening with the gear in this game? It keeps switching on and off. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I don't have the uh, Chris Petrus watching this, unfortunately, so I can't you know, play it off him. What? Why this keeps happening with my gear? Okay, there's another axe. Gold. Alright, let's do some upgrades now. So I have plenty of food. Yeah. Oh, I should do that quest too. The estate's been upgraded. That will help me there. Let's get the food out to him. Done. Just for the hell of it, I'll build another farmer and upgrade. Okay, get him. There. Okay, let's go back out and see if we can. Oh, someone just give something good. Reforce leather. No, we already had that. Okay. We can clear out this level 6 over here, and that should give me enough of a boost that I can really start kicking some ass and move out a lot quicker. Okay, so head to the base. Even though I'm st my stats are just so high, they're compensating for the lower weapon. And I'm getting more just by them by tapping this high level guy. Okay, that may be bad. Gotta avoid that deal with the shaman. Oop. Stop attacking him. I want them to focus on me. Ugh, again they killed him? Man, I'm not having good luck with the trappers. Okay, we got some new armor. Okay. This will go on her. High level bow. Ooh. Upgraded shield. Very nice. You can see we are now really rolling in our gear. Let me give this to her. And now that we have the keep, or the two more arcane lore, I really want to get a wizard. 
And this is where part of the charm of the game comes in with the higher end stuff. Now that I find these rare items, I can now get higher level people into my town. Okay, so we're back in town. What is that? Magnifying glass. Let's them do research better. Oh, very nice armor. Five, five. Okay. Well, I'll try her now. Maybe she'll survive longer than the other ones. Okay. You're in. Send her out. Give her all the upgraded stuff. And really run out of space too. Let's sell some more stuff. There's my goodies. So everyone's getting pretty leveled up in terms of gear. I have a lot of food, got a lot of gold. I still don't want to do that, but I don't think I have a choice. So I'm going to import the iron. So now I permanently unlock iron, and it means I can now upgrade our, let's see, our craftswoman. Where are you? And I'm going to turn her into a smithy. And now I can upgrade her again to basically the ultimate level. She can either make the best weapons or the best armor. But for right now, I'll just let her build. Okay, let's see, I can sell. I have the gold, so I could do that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, do I want to? Yeah, let's get her to, now she's at the highest level. So she'll produce, I can either have her produce items or do research. Researching means she'll unlock more items that she'll be able to then produce. So we'll do that. Got some more visitors. So I do want to build another crafts person and then take them up to armor. So that way we'll have both being produced at the same time. I still need to find a source of water. Okay. That's takes care of that. So we're going to go out once again. We've gone past the early game. We have some pretty good gear on our main guy. And we beat the keep or the fortress base. I was <laughs> got there eventually. So let's see what this portal is. Uh, level 7. Uh, this may be a little much. Let's see. As you can see, Nessie is leveling up very quickly because she's attacking a much higher up enemy and each time it's giving her a lot of experience. Okay, we got an upgrade for the Bard. I got a pretty nice Halber. Now, do I want to attempt... Let's see, she'll keep healing. Alright, let's move over to this lower level, Oop, let's get around this rock first, area and clear that out just to get more resources. And this should be a pretty painless. Yeah, level 3, I'm level 5, they're going to be dead very quick. Maybe I'll get the bar too. Oop. She's doing that. Another robe. Not as good as the one we have. Still no water. Okay. And dead. There we go. If I find a dragon egg, I can actually... I could actually get a dragon. The dragons are very overpowered, but they only gain experience. You have to let, basically let them stay in town leveling up before you take them out. Alright, we're moving along. We're past the early game hump, and our group is leveling up pretty nicely. Our smithy is hopefully, or our weaponsmith is hopefully going to get us some good weapons. Oh, 
king sent me a request again. What is it this time? More food? Eh, I can wait on that. Okay. Look at us go. <laughs> My mace is stunning. That's why they're sort of not attacking. Okay, finish that. Got some more goodies. I can give that to her. Increase her attack. And we can just hop right on over here. Everyone's getting increased stats because they are fighting higher up enemies. More nice armor. More gold, too. Yeah, we're definitely on our way. Oh, we got raiders coming. Where are they coming from? Up left. Alright, we have time to finish this area off. You can see I'm barely taking any damage from these guys. Oh, and we clear another region. I, can she use this with a shield? Yeah. Nice. I can use that, unfortunately. Long sword defense. I could sell these items because I don't need them. And we can intercept the raiders right here. There they are. This will be very quick, hopefully. Hope he stunned me. They're using maces as well. We are a little party is just kicking a lot of ass. Alright, we've been playing for wow, I didn't realize how quick how long it's been. We're already at an hour and a half. So I don't think we're going to have the time to do everything today. Maybe I'll clear a few more just to show it. But you can see this game also has that seat build quality of just one more turn or just one more area to go through. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. And clear these over here. And once your guys, again, get high enough in level, they'll just steamroll over everything in the game. But if you start to lose heroes, it's very hard to recover, because there's only a limited number of enemies on the map. Okay, kill them. I can actually get another priest and have them basically pray and give us bonuses as well. But you can see just how much they're kicking ass. Theta was just able to kill that thing on her own. Okay, more goodies. What's this? Tax 6. Yeah, let's give that to her. And we'll take that. So as long as I'm careful about who I fight, this should pretty much be just a straight up, just slowly but surely clear the whole map. And that's the other kind of problem. The game does get a little bit repetitive, again, because there's just not a lot of options. And this is due to the fact that this was developed on a budget. Okay. But I still love this game. I just love this idea of going out and basically doing ARPG with city building mechanics. Because so I just really enjoy the city builders genre itself. And I'll probably be playing that City Skyline game very shortly. 5-3. Give that to her. And I'll need that. Alright. Still no war. So I was just saying, I, I am going to play the City new game, City Skyline, that just came out because a lot of people are raving about it. And it's nice to have a game city build that people are enjoying again. Okay, so we'll kill this guy pretty quickly. Again, just trying to take them out one at a time so they can't mob us. Oh, what's going on? Uh-oh. 
This could be a little bit bad. I can heal them using the number keys. Okay. Almost got them. As you can see, this level 4, she's able to take on level 7 guys without any problems. Okay. Another upgrade items here. 5 2. Don't want to throw out that uh, golden leer. Get rid of this, get rid of this. There we go. There's a row or plow. <laughs> that will be good for that. Veteran's axe. And I leveled up again so I can make myself even beefier. Resilient. Recover anywhere in the world. I think that's going to be really nice. Let her finish healing Nessie up. And we are at 21. As you can see, it's getting more dangerous the farther we get away, and that's built into the design so you're not just completely clearing everything out. Okay, we'll go around here, lure them. Uh, protect our range characters. And so you got a lot of potions, which is great. Ooh, an upgraded hammer. I'll do that. Solve for the doctor. I don't need. Hmm, do I want that? I'll keep that. I only need. Potion of Hardening or Enchant Apple. There we go. I got a fine hammer now. I could also give this back to the blacksmith to improve their abilities. Oh, Nessie upgraded again. Oh, helmet. Put that there. I will hold on to this. All spots. Uh, we can get rid of the staff. Good. Now let's see what's up here. Things are getting even more dangerous. Let's see level? Where are they? Level thirteen. Oop! Don't want to take on guys. Double my level. But I can go back this way. and start clearing them out here. Hopefully at least. Yeah. Fan level 5, piece of cake. Alright, once we get to 25 sectors completed, or halfway point, I think we will call it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoy this. Again, this is a game that I really want to see someone make a full-blown sequel to it. A lot more depth to it, a lot more options. Alright, finish him out. There's some decent armor. Give that to him. I can just sell that. I'm at the point now where I can just sell everything that, I, that I'm not really going to use, so I'm not really going to get anyone else. Chance of sun enemy. Got that. Oh, we got another portal secure, so we can warp back to town from here. We'll head down this way. Okay, level 8, but we should be able to easily take them out due to our upgrade stats. Alright, actually I'll go back to town quickly and we can show another bit of strategy. First let me just kill these people here and take their stuff. 9-2, not bad. Don't need that. What's this? 5-1. But it's very fast. I'll take that as well. <coughs> so what I can do, I could also upgrade, get the Arbalest, upgrade them. So I'm going to head back to town, I think, after we clear these ruins. Ta 
tax six. I can sell this. Look how much gold I have, by the way. At the beginning, I was craving gold. Now I have more than I know what to do with. So I'll show you what I'm going to do with it once we get back to town. Extra food. I don't even need that. Oh, we got another raiders coming in. I can just run back up here, use the portal, and was that? Oh, we got one more sector, and then we'll, we'll call it. So we'll do a little bit of upgrading, fight these raiders off, and I think we'll call it a night. Okay, so we're back in town. I'm going to pause for a second so I can show you what I'm going to do. So, she's the weaponsmith. I'm going to hire another craftswoman. And what what they're going to do... Okay. Is I'm going to upgrade them to a smithy. And then I will upgrade that further to the armory. So that way she can start researching the high level armor and let me see how the other one is doing there's her there's Tessa so she's finished up oh, she's still researching but once that's done she'll just keep producing all the best stuff okay there's the raider so we'll take them out quickly I mean, look how quick we just dealt with all that. We'll sell some more stuff that we don't need. Okay, we'll upgrade this to a keep. This will unlock everything, basically. Now, the cost of upgrades does go up. If you don't, you know, the more you upgrade each sub successive one goes up in cost but we're again we're at that point where it doesn't really matter so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some big upgrades okay still need water but let's see I'm going to upgrade him I right. uh, can't do too much without water but where's the does he need water too no he needs a dragon egg upgrade her to a priest. I'll make her a temple of good. That improves the quality. And it will also allow, basically if I leave her in town she can pray and do more stuff like that. So we'll just clear out the right side or get as far as we can without needing to stop and then we will stop. We'll call it for a night then. I think you've seen enough of what the game is and to make a good judgment on whether or not you like it or not. And again, it's a game that I like due to how well the two systems of city building and ARPG combat basically play together. It's a good example of these systems basically meshing well. And that's something that's indicative of great game design. Again, the problem with the game is just <coughs> really the limitations of what they designed. And this is Again, a game that I would really love someone to make a higher version of. So any developers listening, hint, hint. Okay, spellcasters are doing decent damage. Oops, sent her home. Okay. We clear the portal. What's that? Huh. Increase staff again. Make her heal even better. I don't even need to stop really, I just keep going up and deal with these dark elves. Still no water. That's I guess the risk of playing on map without all the resources. So that. And another thing, you won't see on this play unfortunately, but one of the other problems with the late game is you'll find that the enemies are so high up in level that there's no one else to really help you boost that. So unless you have characters who you start with and pump them up through playing, you're kind of forced to just jam on, you know, mash the potion button until you kill them. 
Alright, so back in town. Is she done healing? No, not yet. And again, I would really love for more interplay between sending characters out on the field and letting them come back and do more stuff in the town, basically improve themselves. Okay. Oh, she learned how to make another item. Good. Alright. Come on, you're going to go back out into the field. Or come out into the battlefield, that is. Alright. I think with that, I'm just going to do a quick run. I just want to make sure there's no water over here. And then I think that's it. Again, the game is pretty... It has that one more turn feel to it. I just wish there was more depth to it. Because once you've played it multiple times, it does lose its charm. Because there's just not enough replayability built into the mechanics. Okay, kill them quickly. Don't need that. More potions. We have a hideout here. And again, my healer is now at that point where she's basically healing faster than they're taking damage. Another area cleared. She'll start healing me now. And the rating does get a little bit annoying because you're basically forced to stop what you're doing and then go back. Once you clear all the outposts or the bases, then you don't need to worry about it. Alright. I think with that said, we're going to wrap things up. One last comment as I'm running back to town. I wish the town quality did more than just be a prerequisite. I wish there was just more things you can do. And I think that's really my general complaint about Hairland. I just wish that there was more in this game. Because it's really an idea that could have deserved if it was flesh out, could have deserved like a $50 price tag or 40 compared to the $20 budget at the time. And while I'm waiting for these guys to get here, just a quick little uh, topic about that. Again, back in 2008, $20 was considered bargain price. And it's very interesting how much things have changed in the span of time. Now, $20, developers are fighting tooth and nail to get that much money out of one game. And it really is interesting about this change in what people are expecting. And I would love to just sit here and rattle on about that for the next hour, but considering we are almost at two hours of me just talking about this game, I don't think you guys want to sit there and listen to me talk, have another two-hour chat about game evaluation. Let's see, can I even get anyone else? Can't do the... Fortune teller, unfortunately, until I get a crystal ball. But, yeah, I think with that, we are going to call it here. As you can see, Hitterland is an interesting idea. Again, I love the game design. I love this interplay of systems. But it was limited due to the <coughs> design and what they were sort of budging the game for. But hopefully, Stonehearth, which is a game that I've been looking at that has been in Kickstarter. It's Kickstarter and it's been in development now for the last year or so. I hope that will sort of be an evolution of that. And I got the phone ringing as well, so I'm going to call it here. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Please, uh, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Make sure to check out game-wisdom.com for posts and podcasts relating to game design and the industry, as well as our ongoing Patreon campaign, which will allow us to secure monthly funding so that I can focus on these videos and doing more content without having to worry about, you know, this, figuring out where money's coming in. So, thanks again for watching. I'll be back soon with another game to play. And that is it. I gotta answer that phone, so take care, everybody.